We'll bring South by Southwest into our studio all week. And on Monday, we'll take you for a wild ride in the new Nissan 350Z. It's all on Fox 7 News in the morning. This is Fox 7 News at 9. Good evening. Those stories are coming up. But first, the United Nations Chief Weapons Inspector says Iraq is making progress. And as Fox's Melina Bawa reports, some nations are satisfied with Iraq's progress in disarming, while others want a final resolution. Following the latest weapons inspector's report, it was an all-day battle inside the Security Council with the U.S. and Britain struggling to win support for a new resolution, setting a deadline for Saddam Hussein. The report from Chief Weapons Inspector Hans Blick set the stage for a contentious council session over the advisability of war with Iraq. Blix credited Iraq with improved cooperation for destroying several dozen long-range Al-Samud missiles. The destruction undertaken constitutes a substantial measure of disarmament. Indeed, the first since the middle of the 1990s. We are not watching the breaking of toothpicks. Lethal weapons are being destroyed. However, Blix faulted Iraq for not complying fully and recommended that inspections continue for a few more months. When the French foreign minister concurred, he drew a passionate response from the British. Dominic also said, the choice before us was disarmament by peace or disarmament by war. Dominique, that's a false choice. I wish that it were that easy because we wouldn't be having to have this discussion. Later, the British circulated an amended resolution authorizing military action if Saddam does not disarm by March 17th, and the French dismissed the idea out of hand. We could not accept any ultimatum any automatic use of force. They are giving the deadline of the 17th of March, which is 10 days. We don't think that uh, we go to war on timetable. But Secretary of State Colin Powell says time is up. It does not take a long time to comply. Just get on with it. And the British want to get on with it. They want to vote on their amended resolution on Tuesday. France, Germany, China and Russia have all said they will not support another resolution. At the United Nations, Malini Bawa, Fox News. Since 1921, the U.S. Army's 1st Cavalry has gone in first during America's battles. Now the CAV is preparing for a war against terror. And as Fox 7's Jack Hirschfield reports, the cavalry will take their reputation with them when they leave to fight. They fought from the air and battled on the ground. Since 1921, America's 1st Cavalry has gone in first and come out last during America's biggest battles. These soldiers know no other way than leading the way. Because of the firepower that we have. I mean, our soldiers are trained, they're motivated. Every day we train. Uh, whether there's conflict going on, we train day in and day out. So when the time comes for us to go to war, I mean, we're ready. We gotta be ready. It's our job. And it's knowing they'll be the first ones in and last ones out of battle, which has helped these soldiers develop that iron-fisted attitude. It's also that attitude which has helped the 1st Cav develop a very long and prestigious history. You see how the division started from inside the 1st Cavalry's museum at Fort Hood. At first, in 1921, when the Army established its cavalry, it came complete with horses and soldiers carrying bayonets. Gathering regiments from the old U.S. Cavalry days including the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 12th Cavalry Regiments. Since 1921, the CAV, as it's known, has fought in the Pacific during World War II, in Korea during the 50s, Vietnam, Bosnia, and Desert Storm. And from the start, the Army made it clear to cavalry soldiers... We're the heavy armor division. We're the fist, the iron fist of the United States Army. We're the heavy armor division. We're the largest armor division in the United States Army. If it sounds like the cavalry carries a lot of pride, you heard correctly. The 17,000 soldiers in the 1st Cav go into battle and make it safe for other troops to follow. It's a dangerous, difficult, dirty job, and one unique to America's armed forces. Division leaders say it's important those new to the cavalry understand the division's reputation and history. It kind of gives the soldiers that are in the units now something to live up to. Uh, so if they're aware of that, of, of that heritage, uh, they can they have something to set their sights on. And now it starts all over again. Last week, the first Cav out of Fort Hood got the orders to pack up. That the president needs these soldiers to lead the way again, this time in the war against terror. 
And just as they have in every battle the U.S. has fought since 1921, these soldiers are answering those orders, going in first for their fellow troops and making sure they live up to the reputation of first Cav soldiers before them. Jack Hirschfield, Fox 7 News at 9. There's another batch of very cold air heading in our direction, but it won't be here tonight and it won't be here tomorrow. Looks like a Sunday arrival. For tonight, we're going partly cloudy. Temperatures will bottom out in the upper 40s. Tomorrow, we'll start the weekend in fine fashion. Fog in the morning, partly sunny by afternoon. Highs in the middle 70s. Cooler weather expected Sunday. You don't want to miss the five-day forecast. It's coming up in just a couple of minutes. It's a big night for some Texas movie stars. It is the third year the Austin Film Society is recognizing actors from the Lone Star State. Fox's Jenny Lee joins us from the old Robert Miller Airport where the Texas Film Hall of Fame ceremony is underway. Jenny. It is more than well underway. Take a look. More than 700 people are inside Hangar 2, also known as Austin Studios, here tonight to recognize Texans and others who have made an impact in the Texas film industry and, other, and the film industry at whole. And tonight's event also raises money to keep Austin in the forefront of film production. If I'm in the way. It was one celebrity sighting after another at the third annual Texas Film Hall of Fame Awards. For some, Austin holds a special place in their hearts. And Austin's a special place with the music and everything, and, uh, and a terrific barbecue here and culture. And uh, it's like, it's like going, going to a home away from home. Also, just a few years ago, I believe there were airplanes in this thing instead of uh, films being made, you know? I'd much rather do a movie here in uh, Austin than in Canada. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Canada, but, you know, it's good to, you know, for the economy and stuff like that, and good for Texas and real good crews down here. Those who have been in the film industry a while, like Peter Fonda, the easy writer himself, credits that film with opening up the doors to independent films. It was uh, Roger Corman who opened it up. It was Roger Corman who for $19,000 put in his uh, swimming pool the creature from the back lagoon. <laughs> you know, anybody who's willing to go out, it's like Robert Rodriguez coming out with Marach, you know, that's independent stuff. It's amazing how it's grown. And, and, uh, and uh, Mike Judge, Robert Rodriguez, Rick Linkletter, it's, it's a wonderful film community. Texans being inducted tonight include Horton Foote, the actor who wrote The Trip to Bountiful, and Toby Hooper, who directed The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist. Dallas native Owen Wilson is receiving the Rising Star Award and initially didn't think it was a big deal. That's cool when you put it like that. Yeah, I didn't think of it like that, getting it with uh, Peter Fonda. That's nice company. Back live in Hangar 2, also known as Austin Studios. And we need to mention other inductees tonight include Farrah Fawcett and Woody Harrelson. Also, Dooley Wilson, the piano player from Casablanca, received the Legacy Award tonight. So a big night for a lot of stars. Reporting live in East Austin, Jimmy Lee, Fox 7 News at 9. For more than a decade, Jerry Van King has played on 6th Street. It's a place known for live music. But less than a month ago, a pair of APD handcuffs stopped the music. Fox 7's Eric Barajas joins us. Eric, why would a musician get arrested for playing on 6th? Because he didn't have a permit, Dick. So APD says he was in violation of the city noise ordinance and took the King to jail. For more than 15 years, Jerry Van King, also known as King of 6th Street, has played his music in the live music capital of the world, usually getting nothing but praises, usually. Next thing I know, I was bum rushed with, I don't know, at least eight to 10 police officers coming my way. And he, he well, King, you're under arrest. We don't want you. <laughs> Austin police say on February 27th, after several warnings and a ticket, officers arrested King and confiscated his bass guitar, amplifier, and microphone. Police say his equipment was not on this enclave built specifically for him by the Jazz. When the officers arrived at the scene, he had part of his uh, equipment on the public right of way in the sidewalk. And that's in, basically in violation of that exemption. There are security risks down here, and we need the police to to handle that kind of thing. And why uh, hit on something like that? I, I really just don't understand the motivation at all. After getting out of jail, King continued to play just without an amplifier. Friday night is his first time to plug it back in in over a week. I just hope I ain't. Uh, well, I've been playing, so I guess I won't be too rough. 
Matt Leffer, owner of the Jazz Louisiana Kitchen, says the city has mailed him a permit that allows King to play on restaurant property so those on 6th Street can hear his amplified four-string. King says though he got back his bass guitar and amplifier, APD still has his microphone. He says it wasn't available when he went to pick it up. Reporting from the studio, Eric Barajas, Fox 7 News at 9. Coming up on Fox 7 News at 9, former Texas Attorney General Dan Morales is in federal court today. Seven on your side blows the whistle on tax ripoffs. They'll sell you a kit, they'll sell you books and tapes. Then new at 9.30. Right now you are on your own. Tough guy Bruce Willis battles wild and crazy Steve Martin at the box office. Keep watching. Fox 7 News at 9. We'll be right back. What if you had the power of Judge Judy? I throw the books at my sleazy, slimy, lying, dirtbag, to pay salesman. It's not a rug, it's a ferret. Well, here's your chance. Baloney. Do I have stupid written on my forehead? Get over it. Don't lie to me. Oh, you don't like my ruling? There is no appeal. Not in my court. Case closed. Stick your head into Judy's court. The school bully would be toast. Watch Judge Judy weekdays from 4 to 5 on Fox 7. Fox 7 News is sponsored by Chili's. You're watching Fox 7 News at 9. Former Attorney General Dan Morales says he's innocent. Yesterday, a federal grand jury indicted him for illegally using campaign money for personal use and for trying to milk cash out of the state's tobacco settlement. Fox 7's Mike Rosen was in court this morning when both he and another lawyer were released on bond. The, those are the, the, uh, oh. San Morales just as unfazed by an errant tree branch on his way into court this morning as he is by the charges against him. Every single allegation of wrongdoing in this indictment is untrue. Morales and his friend, Houston attorney Mark Murr, turned themselves in separately. The 12 count indictment accuses the former attorney general of trying to cut Murr in on the state's $17 billion settlement against the tobacco industry by attempting to pay Murr hundreds of millions of dollars in attorney's fees for work he never did. Murr wouldn't talk to reporters. Fix your money with Would you have done it over again? Can I talk to Mr. Rosen? Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Morales refused to talk specifics, but talked plenty about tobacco, trying to play the money that helps pay for health care to his own legal advantage. Every decision I made with regard to the prosecution of this litigation on behalf of the state was made with the intention of benefiting and protecting the public interest. And Morales says the charges against him are a price he knew he might pay for going after a powerful industry. And everyone knows that there weren't very many people in agreement with my decision to file uh, this suit. Significant efforts were made to, pre uh, to prevent me from doing so. And I think that those are among the sorts of things that we've not even begun uh, to have an opportunity to, uh, to discuss. During his career, Morales has made his share of political enemies, but arguably more Democrats than Republicans after upholding a court ruling against affirmative action at state universities. After he lost last year's gubernatorial primary to Tony Sanchez, Morales campaigned for Governor Perry, and Perry named Morales to his crime commission. Today, Perry had little comment. I got great faith that uh, our system of justice will ferret out uh, the appropriate uh, answers. Mike Rosen, Fox 7 News at 9. Coming up, find out how to protect your identity. And Border Patrol agents score a big cocaine bust. Stand by for more Fox 7 News at 9. Okay. Best not let your alligator mouth overload okay. a canary hind in so unless you can lift that load. <laughs> You keep sticking your foot in that prairie pie, you're gonna get it nasty. <laughs> Don't jump to the bait again. You liable to wind up dangling on the end of a hook with a stronger line than you can swallow. Judge Larry Joe's got a fast tongue, a sharp wit, and he doesn't horse around. Put a lid on. <laughs> Texas Justice. Watch weekdays at 9 and 12:30 on Fox 7. News at nine. The threat of identity theft is still in the spotlight tonight after a computer hacking incident at the University of Texas. Hackers gained access to more than 55,000 names and social security numbers through the university database. Experts say it's hard to protect against computer hackers, but you can protect your identity by guarding your social security number. If they have a health identity card or another kind of card that's got their social security number on it, make sure you know where it is at all times.
For more on how to deal with identity theft, log on to fox7.com or call the data theft hotline at the number on your screen, 475-9020. Segundo Hamderman has been sentenced to 70 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. He was convicted of aggravated sexual assault and aggravated kidnapping. Hamderman was accused of impersonating an immigration and naturalization agent and targeting women at Capitol Metro bus stops. Border Patrol agents in Las Cruces, New Mexico, busted some cocaine smugglers with 51 pounds of the drug. Smugglers glued the drugs to foam and then to the door frame of the car. Agents turned the 21-year-old female driver over to, and the drugs over to the Drug Enforcement Agency. South Padre Island will now host a live Girls Gone Wild pay-per-view TV show. Mantra Entertainment says the move from Panama City Beach, Florida to South Padre had nothing to do with arrests threatened by Panama City Beach Mayor Lee Sullivan. They say the switch was for technical reasons. So ahead, it's that time of year, tax time. Tonight, Seven on Your Side investigates tax scams and how you can keep away from them. Story when Fox 7 News at 9 returns. Everyone wants convenient weather and traffic reports in the morning. So if you're walking out the door between 7 and 8, turn on Fox 7 News. We're still here with the info you need. Get more weather and traffic on Fox 7 News in the morning. This is Carrie Benjamin from Mix 94.7. If you're stuck in your car during rush hour traffic and want to find out what's making news in Austin, tune in to Mix 94.7. Join me for a local update from Fox 7 News. Just listen in weekdays for the latest news from Fox 7. The Simpsons helped Krusty run for Congress. If you want me to kiss your babies, wipe the crap off their faces and pass them up. It's the episode the government doesn't want you to see. There is no North Dakota. They won't admit it. Oh! An all-new Simpsons. Then Fox tackles Looking out for you, 7 on Your Side investigates on Fox 7 News at 9. The tax season is in full swing. Unfortunately, so are the tax scams. They say there are only two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. Few are fond of either, and some say they'd rather die than pay their taxes, while others say it's our duty. Well, we have the freedom that we have here in the U.S., so you're going to have to pay taxes for services that we provide for elderly people, for Medicaid, for armed forces. Unfortunately, there is a lot of tax trickery taking place. Con artists trying to pull a fast one on honest taxpayers by offering miracle tax solutions. The IRS has made a list of the top 12 and urges you to avoid falling victim to any among the dirty dozen. At the top of the list are offshore transactions. Trying to hide money in order to keep from paying your taxes is illegal. Good news is the IRS has a come clean period from now until April 15th. If you've been involved in a scheme like this, you can come forward and voluntarily disclose that you may be involved in something like this. Tax scam number two is identity theft. That's where a thief takes your social security number, files a false income tax return, and gets your refund. Third on the list are phony tax payment checks. Con artists are selling these instruments that they claim are legitimate cash money. Uh, they're, they look like money orders or they look like bank drafts. Number four is a special tax refund for African Americans, which offer a tax credit as reparation for slavery. There is no law that has allowed reparations. They prey on your hope and they tell you how you can get a special tax credit. Fifth is not withholding taxes from wages. Employers are falling for an idea that they don't have to withhold employment tax. That's not true. Number six, improper home-based businesses. There are some con men who are out there pushing a kit uh, that you can basically set up a phony home-based business and take all these deductions, and those won't hold up if you're ever audited. Seven, pay the tax, get the prize. These are con men who are contacting you and saying, if you'll send them a check for the income tax, they'll send you the prize. Well, they'll get the check, and you won't get the prize. Number eight, frivolous arguments that you don't have to pay your income tax. You do have to pay income tax. You cannot untax yourself. These con artists will convince you that you might be able to. They'll sell you a kit. They'll sell you books and tapes. Ninth, social security tax schemes that promise you a refund on the social security taxes you've already paid. Number 10, I can get you a big refund. Always be aware of anyone who promises you they can guarantee you an income tax refund without even knowing what your financial situation is. Number 11, sharing or borrowing dependents in order to claim an earned income tax credit. You want to make sure 
you never borrow anyone else's kids for income tax purposes, and you never lend out Social Security numbers. And last but not least, watch out for phony IRS agents who come to your house to collect your tax money. So if someone just comes out of the blue and says, I'm from the IRS and you owe us money, I'd be very suspect of that. You can call the IRS to verify anyone's identification. The bottom line is this. There is no secret way to get out of paying your taxes. If you try, you risk being charged with tax evasion and fraud. You'll pay a huge fine and worse, go to prison. And you'll still have to pay your taxes with interest and penalties tacked on. Taxpayers who suspect tax fraud should report it to the IRS. For more information on tax scams, log on to fox7.com. Temperatures up into the 80s today. It looks like 70s for highs tomorrow. And get this, we're talking about 60s for highs on Sunday behind another blast of very chilly air. Full forecast up next from the Fox 7 Weather Center. Next 9.30, North Korea may be launching more missiles this weekend. And Fort Hood's 4th Cavalry had some war games in Galeen today. We'll take you there. Fox 7 News at 9. We'll be right back. We'll bring South by Southwest into our studio all week. And on Monday, we'll take you for a wild ride in the new Nissan 350Z. It's all on Fox 7 News in the morning. Fox Monday. What started as a dream come true. That guy's all over you. Could turn into a jealous nightmare. You up there falling all over that jerk. I'm not going to play. American Idol's Tamira Gray on an all new Boston Public. Then the average length of an engagement is 13 months, but we're going to do it in one hour. Our five singles will get engaged to sight unseen to the people you chose. Be there when they see their mate for the first time. Married by America. Watch Monday at 7 on Fox 7. Attention Austin. Credit, bad credit, no job. Monday at 9, 7 on your side investigates why potential employers are digging up your credit report. Is that any of their business? She said, well, we can't even process the, the application without it, that information. See if your credit report could keep you from getting a good job. Monday on Fox 7 News at 9. On American Idol, the countdown to stardom begins when the final... Fox 7. From the Fox 7 weather team, Chief Meteorologist Scott Fisher. Well, it's still winter, but it didn't feel like it today. 81 degrees in Georgetown. We hit 79 at Round Rock. Buda, 78 degrees. How about Cedar Park right at the 80 degree mark? Numbers in the Hill Country, equally impressive. Lano at 80, Burnett at 80, Marble Falls 81, 77 toasty degrees in Fredericksburg. We're going to do it again tomorrow with some warm air. However, once again, we're talking about this air mass right here, this very cold air mass making a charge southbound. Now, this one is not going to be a direct hit for us. It's going to slide more in this direction. However, we're going to get our taste of the chilly air. Computer puts the frontal position right about there tomorrow afternoon. This is the air that's, again, we're talking 10, 15, 20 degrees colder than what we saw today. There's the positioning tomorrow night right along the Red River. And by the time Sunday gets here, well, Sunday afternoon, a computer put it back north. This is wrong. Never mind on that map. A couple of minutes ago, the front, the computer had it through us. Now it doesn't. Take my word. It's going to be chillier. I'm going to take those computer maps out for the rest of the night. 66 degrees, the current temperature. Humidity at 40%. 82 at Bergstrom. Just five off the record high of 87. 79. Uh, 82 was maybe 79 at Bergstrom. No rain today. 0.26 for the year. Hometown temperatures, 50s and 60s across the region. 67 right now at Bastrop, 66 in Lockhart, 61 in Lano. Heading down to the 40s and 50s, a mild night with a few clouds moving in. We're going to go for that spring feel, 75 tomorrow. Southerly winds, the name of the game. And the story is going to be all day long, those southerly winds. Moving temperatures into the 70-degree bracket. Maybe a couple of 80s for the Hill Country, not out of the question. There's the front I was talking about. And uh, the computer had it about here. I've got it here for Saturday and here for Sunday. So we're going to expect to see much chillier air, 8, 10, 12, 15 degrees cooler than we see on Saturday coming up on Sunday. Also, say goodbye to the crystal clear blue skies. Not a bad day tomorrow, but you'll notice all this cloud cover streaming in from the west. It's generally high cloudiness. We're also going to see the low clouds coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. You can sort of see it almost happening right now down there with uh, some low cloudiness around the Gulf Coast. 
There's future clouds and radar. There's not much future radar to talk about, but there's a lot of future cloud cover. The computer wants to cloud us up with those low clouds by about midnight tonight. Keep the clouds through the overnight. Put some breaks in there tomorrow afternoon. We'll call it partly sunny for your Saturday. And then we'll talk about more clouds coming in for Sunday. And remember, we're also seeing that cold air come in. So this could be some overrunning with the warmer air moving up over the shallow layer of cold air. Typically, that means fog and drizzle. Sunshine forecast on your Saturday, 2 to 8 hours. I'm trending farther up toward the 8 than the 2. 8 plus in the desert southwest. But for Sunday, we're still in that 2 to 8 hour mode of sunshine. We're trending closer to the 2 rather than the 8 for the second half of the weekend. Hometown forecast tonight, not nearly as chilly as the last few. 47 Cedar Park, 47 Smithville, 50 Lampasas, and 51 in Johnson City. My forecast for you tonight like this, partly cloudy with some fog developing after midnight. 48 degrees, the overnight low here in the city. A little warmer out in the hill country. Morning fog, partly sunny, 75 south, 5 to 10 on the winds. Flying five-day forecast gives us that cold front early Sunday, knocking us into the lower 60s and probably a little drizzle with it as well. We'll warm back up Monday into the 70s. However, we are looking at some showers and thunderstorms Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Former Texas Attorney General Dan Morales faces mail fraud and conspiracy charges. He surrendered today and was released on bond after agreeing not to leave the country. Morales and his friend Mark Murr are named in a 12-count indictment. A new proposal by the U.S. and key allies Britain and Spain seems likely to face rejection when it goes up for a U.N. vote next week. The plan will give Saddam Hussein until March 17th to give up banned weapons or face war. It failed to draw much support today at the Security Council. The international spotlight is on Iraq, but North Korea hasn't slipped under the radar. The communist nation is planning more long-range missile tests, and its nuclear reactor is operating. And as Fox's Brett Baer reports, the U.S. has military planes in place in Guam, just in case. U.S. B-1 bombers landed at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam today. B-52 bombers arrived there overnight. The long-range aircraft are now in place as a deterrent force as the tension with North Korea continues to escalate. Defense officials tell Fox News they are convinced North Korea now has the ability to test a long-range ballistic missile at any time without notice. In fact, the American reconnaissance plane that was intercepted by North Korean MiGs last weekend was being flown to try to observe such a missile test. New satellite photographs confirm that North Korea's nuclear reactor has been restarted at Yongbyon. Note the steam coming out of a cooling tower circled in red. Despite North Korea's recent moves, the Bush administration continues to pursue a diplomatic solution with Russia, China, South Korea, and Japan. This is a uh, regional issue. I say a regional issue because um, there's a lot of countries that have got a direct stake into whether or not North Korea has uh, nuclear weapons. But Democrats continue to charge that by focusing on Iraq, the administration is turning its back on the escalating North Korean situation. But if you wanted to know where the greatest problems lie for America, they lie on the Korean Peninsula. And the fact that we're de describing that as a regional problem and not a global one, and not doing more every single day we can to deal with that problem, uh, I find deeply disturbing. Many analysts believe if and when the first bombs start to drop in Iraq, North Korea will start aggressively testing their Typo Dong 2 missiles. The director of the Defense Intelligence Agency told senators last month all eyes are now on North Korea. Other defense intelligence resources are committed to careful assessment of the dangerous situation on the Korean Peninsula. The DIA's assessment is that North Korean leader Kim Jong-il has a number of options for putting pressure on the U.S. to include, quote, increasing efforts to drive a wedge between the U.S. and other regional states, provocative actions along the demilitarized zone, increasing military training and readiness, and conducting large-scale tests, military exercises, or demonstrations, including a missile launch or nuclear weapons test. Intelligence officials say the two-stage version of the Typo Dong 2 missile is believed to be capable of hitting the U.S. West Coast, Hawaii, and Alaska. But the three-stage version in development has the range to possibly deliver a nuclear weapon-sized payload to the entire continental United States. At the Pentagon, Brett Baer, Fox News.
Turkey has moved tanks to its border with Iraq. Turkish armor being hauled by truck will be used to fortify the country's southern frontier. Turkey has plans to enter northern Iraq in the event of a war. Earlier in the newscast, we told you about the 1st Cavalry at Fort Hood. Today at the Army base, more than 1,500 members of the 4th Cavalry continue to train. But some of the soldiers say while the training builds skills they need, it is also a stress reliever. What basically brings them together today is team building skills, uh, combat skills, and also to have a little fun and get a little break from the intense training and preparation we've been doing in the last couple of weeks. It's a good natured, uh, fun competition. We understand that, uh, but deep down inside, it just, uh, it's very serious. Fourth Cavalry is waiting for deployment orders from the president. Their equipment has already been sent overseas. The U.S. Coast Guard protects all U.S. citizens, including the four-legged kind. This morning off the coast of Corpus Christi, a crew rescued a drowning black Labrador. The canine was barely staying above water when they got there. The dog went under. A rescuer jumped 15 feet into the water, dove down 10 feet underwater to rescue the dog. They pulled him into the helicopter, gave him some mouth-to-snout resuscitation. They say he's going to be okay. Stock market bounced off early session lows. The Dow Jones Industrial closed up today 66 points at 77.44. The Nasdaq was up two points, ending the day at 13.05. Labor Secretary Elaine Chao calls the latest unemployment report unexpected and disappointing. More jobs were lost in February than in any month since after the September 11th attacks. Companies slashed more than 300,000 jobs last month. Still to come on Fox 7 News at 9, we'll tell you about the new movies that opened today. Scott's back with our weekend forecast. Later days in with the day sports. All of this and more when Fox 7 News at 9 continues. The Simpsons helped Krusty run for Congress. If you want me to kiss your babies, wipe the crap off their faces and pass them up. It's the ep There are a couple of new movies on the big screen this weekend. Anna Hovind gives us a preview. Your prime objective is to extract Dr. Lena Hendricks. A presence on the ground will be considered hostile. In Tears of the Sun, Bruce Willis is a Navy SEAL who goes to Africa to rescue a doctor. Birds are taking heavy fire and we're no longer entering Nigerian airspace. Right now, you are on your own. The doctor doesn't want to leave anyone behind. What about my people? I'm not here for them. Willis must make a decision. I strongly advise you complete the evacuation as planned. You know as well as I do what's going to happen to him if I leave him out here. That is not your mission. Your unit is not equipped to handle the additional threat. My team will complete this mission. Tears of the Sun is rated R. Did someone make a blind internet date? I hope you like Sham. Must have not have took a good look at that picture. I have looked at that picture a lot, and trust me, you are not in it. In mm -hmm. bringing down the house, Steve Martin thought he was yeah. the king of his castle. That is, until Queen Latifah showed up. You're a convict? I did time, baby, but I ain't do the crime. Shoot, Roscoe cracked that dough, kicked it off the heezy and bounced. What did you just say? She makes him a deal. You have to go. And you work on my case? Around the clock. And I leave when you expunge my record. Consider it expunged. Do you remember? This is trespassing. This is a lot of trespassing. Oh, oh. Bringing down the house is rated PG-13. What's wrong with Georgie? He's having trouble reading. Double D cup. What are you doing letting him read the... You read. Dad, what's a rack? It's a country. With now showing, I'm on a hold. Well, if you plan on going to, a new, to New York for a Broadway musical, you may have to change your plan. Broadway musicians went on strike today. Actors and stagehands say they wouldn't cross their picket lines. Producers had been hoping to use either taped music or computer-generated orchestras to take the place of the musicians. Bill Head, there's a new statue in the UK. Find out who it's honoring. Fox 7 News at 9 will be right back. Today. From the Fox 7 weather team, Chief Meteorologist Scott Fisher. Quite a thermal workout this afternoon at 
Bergstrom. We bottomed out this morning at 34 degrees and warmed it all the way up to near 80 by afternoon. 429 in the p.m. We hit 79. Temperatures were a little bit warmer at Maybury where we hit 82. And that was the hottest record we saw throughout the region today. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Another Arctic air mass. These poor folks up north just getting no break. Two below at Billings, Montana, and they're an hour behind us or so. So they're not even looking at the midnight hour for another three. Oh, it, this is the air mass that is heading down southward. Now this one, unlike the last one, is going to move more like this. So we're just going to be clipped by it, but it's certainly going to bring us some chillier air. And I revised the computer forecast for you. Had the map all messed up before, but this is the positioning of the frontal boundary Sunday afternoon. It is clearly through central Texas. So we are talking about a very big change in the air mass from Saturday to Sunday. 66 degrees the current temperature. We may not get that warm come Sunday. South wind at 3, 2, 9 or 9, 6 falling on the barometer. 50s and 60s tonight. Pick out your hometown. Georgetown 64, San Marcos 61. It's 59 degrees in Mason. 60 getting 66 LaGrange. Heading into the 40s and 50s. A mild night overnight and looking at 70s and 80s tomorrow. 76 for Georgetown. Right at 80 at Lano. I've got us a little bit cooler than we were today only because we'll probably see a few more clouds and you can see them sneaking into the picture here, especially from the west. These are high clouds, not rainmakers. These are the low clouds, which may be drifting in off the Gulf. Drizzle, perhaps a little tomorrow. Better chance for that coming on Sunday. So, forecast partly cloudy, fog developing, 48 degrees the overnight low. South winds will continue. Morning fog, partly sunny, 75, still with the south winds tomorrow. But Sunday's going to be different. Arctic type cold front. We're not going to get a direct blast from this thing, but it's certainly going to chill us down from the 80s, 70s, and now 60s for Sunday with a little bit of drizzle. Showers, thunderstorms, a possibility. Isolated stuff Monday. Better chances Tuesday and Wednesday. Enjoy tomorrow. Thanks, Scott. Okay. An honor for one of Britain's most beloved royals. The late Queen Mother, known as the Queen Mom, died last year, but she remains in the hearts of many. Today, Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh unveiled a bronze statue of the Queen Mother at the famous Sandown horse racing track. Coming up, the rally caps come on early tonight for the Longhorns. We'll add highlights of Texas and Arizona. And the Bats took hockey's best record to the ice tonight. Highlights from the Bat Cave as well. Coming up on Fox 7 News at 9. What if you had the power of Judge Judy? I throw the books at my feet. Our team covers your teams. Fox 7 Sports with Dave Cody. Zona humbles the horns tonight. Well, after dropping to 11th in the polls and demoting ace Justin Simmons to the bullpen, the UT baseball team hoped to right the ship against number 21 Arizona tonight. But Augie's defending national champs becoming a bullseye for opposing teams. Even at the dish, visitors get to Danny Moogie in the first. Moises Duran powers one into the night over the wall and left to put Arizona up two zip in the first inning. Horns generous in the second. Omar Quintanilla can't feel the grounder cleanly. That allows Arizona's third run. Horns get one back in the fourth after Majeski stole second and third. Taylor Teagarten drives him in with a hit to left. But Sean Ryerson, a complete game for Arizona and a 5-1 win. Sam LeCure will start for Simmons tomorrow. Well, Jody Conrad all smiles after recording her 800th win and coaching the Lady Horns to their first Big 12 championship. League coaches have voted the Longhorn legend Big 12 coach of the year. Stacy Stevens and Heather Shriver were also named first team all conference. Jamie Carey was voted newcomer of the year. Jody talked about the honor. I am appreciative of that award, but again, this is a team sport and it's about the players that we have in the program and what they've accomplished. And uh, you don't get coach of the year if your team doesn't perform. So the credit goes to them. Uh, we've had a great run. Well, the Horns begin Big 12 tournament play against the winner of Iowa State, Kansas, Wednesday at noon in Dallas at Reunion Arena. A Big 12 title and a possible number one seed in the NCAA tournament at stake for the Longhorn men tomorrow. Josh Pels tells us they'll be storming into Norman. It's a confidence-building win. And Texas' victory over Oklahoma last month has them feeling they can do it again. That well, may help us a lot, I mean, knowing that they had... Um, the, the eight in a row game winning streak on us for the past years, we weren't able to beat them. So, I mean, with the fact that we won, we know we're right there. 
but this time they have to travel to Norman where they've lost the last three games by an average of over 16 points per game. We got the hottest, I guess the home win streak in the nation. I think it's 37. And, you know, it'll be nice if we could go in there and get a W to snap that, but it's going to be a hard fought game. When I was a first guy who was a freshman, man, I mean, they beat, I mean, they beat us bad when we were here. I think it was about 30. And I couldn't believe it, you know. And then we went up there, and I think they beat us by 20. And it was just like, it was just embarrassing. So I mean, when when you get beat like that, and now that we're older, and we know, you know, the competition, you know, how high you got to take your game. We hate them. We want to beat them. We got to come in with the same focus and the same mindset that we came in with the game in Austin, and it's, you know, it's going to be tough, you know, because it's on the road, and you know, our backs against the wall. And with the possibility of a Big 12 title on the line, it makes tomorrow's game a whole lot more important. Josh Pels. Fox 7 Sports. UIL boys, 2A semifinals. Hitchcock and Brock win. will play for the 2A title tomorrow. 5A, Corpus Christi Ray rallies to beat Cy Creek. will face DeSoto tomorrow. Well, Dirk and the first place Mavs playing six games over 10 days. Miami's Pat Riley watching Nick Van Exel light it up from the outside. Hits the three. Michael Finley as well. Former Dallasite Pudge Rodriguez, now a Florida resident, watching. He watches Nash set the screen for Dirk. Mavs beat the Heat. They've won 9 of 11. Ice Bats final home weekend before the playoffs. Turn back the clock night at the Bat Cave. They're in throwback jerseys, playing like the old Bats. Jared Dumba sneaks it past Matt Barnes to make it 2-0 Indianapolis. Then Scott Lewis of the ice. Backhands one past Barnes. The Bats trail 3-0 starting the final period. Bozier City in tomorrow night. And another All-American for Houston, Tillotson, and track. Deshika Banks, third in the long jump today at the Indoor Nationals in Tennessee. I'm Max Gossin with another look at our forecast. The Texas celebrities gather at the old Robert Miller Airport. Stay with us more Fox 7 News at 9. Fox 7 News in the morning has cool cooking segments so you can whip up new dishes. And dining out on Friday so you can find the hot spots to chow down. There's more food in the morning on Fox 7 News. Our top stories tonight, Francis U.N. Ambassador says he'll block any Security Council resolution that approves the automatic use of force. He calls the U.S.-British deadline a pretext for war. Britain and the U.S. today proposed a March 17th deadline for Iraq to cooperate or face war. More than 700 people showed up tonight for the 2003 Texas Film Hall of Fame Awards. Celebrities there include Owen Wilson. Ann Richards, who acted as the MC and Bill Paxton, just to name a few. The ceremony honors Texas actors and others who've made an impact on the film industry. It's the third year the Austin Film Society has put on the event. Jerry Van King, known as the King of Sixth Street, is playing his electric bass guitar tonight after more than a week. His equipment was confiscated. He was arrested by APD last month for violating a noise ordinance. Officers say some of his equipment was on the sidewalk and not on private property. The jazz restaurant now has a permit allowing King to play. After a nearly cloud-free Friday, we're starting to see a lot of cloud development from the west. An area of low pressure is spinning these high clouds in our direction. Saturday will certainly be more cloudy than Friday, and Sunday will certainly be more cloudy than Saturday. So do be prepared for that. However, temperatures tomorrow are going to be just fine. We're shooting for highs in the mid 70s, maybe some isolated 80s for the hill country. Our next batch of chilly air is coming down the pike late Saturday into Sunday. It's really just a glancing blow for us, but you're going to notice the difference. Temperatures behind the air mass averaging 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what's in front of the air mass. So we're talking 70s tomorrow and likely 60s for highs on Sunday. Hometown forecast tonight, 47s are wild in Cedar Park, Smithville, and Marble Falls. 51 Johnson City, 50 Lampasas, and 49 degrees tonight in Dripping Springs. Partly cloudy across the board, fog developing after midnight, 48 degrees the overnight low. Look out for that fog along with some drizzle tomorrow morning. Skies becoming partly sunny by afternoon, 75 on the top side. Flying five-day forecast weekend version, and not a bad weekend, but a few more clouds than we saw today and a few more clouds on Sunday than Saturday. Even more drizzle Sunday, and we'll start to get those showers back, but uh, not till Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And there's a big plans at the baseball park for you? Big plans always at the baseball park on the weekend, <laughs> and I finally get to practice for a couple of times. It's, it's above 40. Sounds oh, good. Right. Thank you, Scott. Okay. That's Fox, Fox 7 News at 9. Thanks for making Fox 7 your choice for news.